Good morning, Westmont. Happy first day of school. I hope you're all energized and ready to go. Please stand if you're able and let's worship.
Hey, I'm Scott Lasea, the campus pastor here at Westmont College, and, uh, and I want to invite you to consider these Cop Box Day groups. If you've been around here at all, you know we've got a lot going on. We've got chapel three times a week, and service opportunities, and missions trips, and all sorts of things going on in the academic world here. And I want you to consider joining one of these Cop Box Day groups. Cop Box Day means time or space or capacity for God. And it's this idea of building into your weekly rhythm some time to set aside with a small group of people and look at God's word and consider what it might mean uh, for your faith and uh, as you grow right now. There's a lot of things I appreciate about Cap X Day groups. Um, just a little backstory: I was in a Cap X Day group when I was a student here um, about 10 years ago. And I still remember some of the things I learned about praying through the Psalms, and um, they were formative for me moving forward into my adult life. Um, another thing I really appreciate about CapEx Day groups is um, that it's a way to sanctify my calendar. It's a way for me to be intentional about putting something um, on my calendar every week where I'm intentionally making space to hear from God. And I think a small group setting is a really great place for us to do that. Um, it provides some accountability and some community discipline to, to make it work and uh, there's great mentors who are leading these groups. Um, so I encourage you to consider a CapEx Day group, consider how you might um, honor God with your calendars this year by setting aside some time to do that and maybe in 10 years you'll still be remembering some of the lessons you learned. My name is Samantha Joyner and one reason I love CapEx Day is it's a set aside time to be with God and to get in the Word with people of our community and staff members. Mine was with Pam Beebe, the Pam Beebe, and Regina Moon, and it was just such a sweet time because it was a structured set aside time that during my crazy schedule with school, finals, tests, papers, I know that in that time I'm gonna just set it aside to pray and to be with God. Hi, my name is Beth, and one thing I liked about Capex Day, other than the fact that we got to watch Lord of the Rings every week, was the fact that just for an hour out of every week, I got to take time and hang out with a group of really awesome people and discuss God and the direction of our lives and talk about how we're all on a journey together and how we can support each other and be a fellowship around one another. I love the way that students can come wherever they are, whether they open their Bible every day or they've hardly seen a Bible in the last four years, it doesn't matter. You can come and be with a group of people that will encourage and help you grow. I also love that community leaders, faculty and staff, uh, pastors from the local community are all involved in Capex Day and bring uh, bring a richness to what students experience through the program. And this campus of 1,200 students, you're not going to know everybody. Pretty nice to be known by a small group of people and to know a smaller, more intimate group of people to talk about important things and make space for that in your life. Yeah, Paul. Hello, everybody. So last semester, I joined a brave fellowship of fellow students on a quest to find the biblical themes that Tolkien had embedded in his 12-hour epic, The Lord of the Rings. Um, led by our wise wizard, Evan the Tall, his wife, the Lady Megan, and their brave shaggy steed, Ollie, uh, <laughs> we uh, consumed baked goodies, watched all three films in their entirety, extended editions or bust, and spent hours discussing um, how we are all characters in God's grand story, put in, the, in our exact time and place to fulfill his purposes. Whether that be trekking halfway across a continent to throw a magical ring in a volcano, um, or pursuing a bachelor's degree at a certain Westmont college. If that sounds pretty great, um, I'd, really I'd really encourage you guys then to consider uh, signing up for the CapEx Day program. Um, though I can't guarantee you'll have the exact same experience as myself, uh, it's a fantastic opportunity to um, enjoy a really meaningful fellowship with your fellow peers over tasty treats and intimate conversations, all facilitated by the wonderful Westmont facility staff and community members. 
who know exactly what they're, who pretty much know what they're talking about, um, and also really care about um, us as students. Uh, as a wise wizard once told me, all we have to do, decide now, is what to do with the time that we are given. So I would highly encourage you, anyone, inter uh, anyone interested, to open their all student emails um, that they got from the campus pastor's office and sign up for our CapEx day group today. Yeah? yeah. Good job, Paul. All right, if anybody needs a seat, there's some seats over here. You can come seat on Reed Sheard's lap or a bit if you could scooch, ooch, make it possible. Hey, a hundred years ago when I went to Westmont, at the end of chapel, you'd have to run and get in line and sign your name on a clipboard to prove that you were at chapel. By the way, new students, welcome to chapel. This is chapel. We do this. We do this three times a week, and you get to be here. And now, you might say to yourself, Scott, what if I have the flu? Don't worry. We'll give you ample skips. You, you get like 12 a semester. You can have the flu twice if you want. Go for it. Um, but uh, we, we kind of plan that in. But this is our regular rhythm as a community. And so to track that and keep that uh, little form of accountability and encouragement, uh, we commissioned the high and mighty Samantha Joyner to, uh, to create an app with our team, Joel Banez and the tech and all this stuff. And so we've created this app now in the spirit of efficiency, um, effervescence, and efficiency. So with no further ado, let's hear from Sam about how this thing works. Hey guys, um, I'm Sam Joyner, hello. Um, I still see that we have a few gaps in seats, so if you guys can squish in as much as you can so people in the back can take a seat, please do that now, you on the bleachers too. Anyway, okay, we have developed two different apps, one for the iPhone, one for the Android, and don't worry if you can't download and sign in right now, we're crashing the Wi-Fi, so it's okay. Um, just make sure you have it by Wednesday, um, but if you do have it today, we do want you to scan out. Does anyone have it ready to go today? <gasps> Yes, okay, so please scan out on your way out. On Wednesday, please be ready to scan in before 10.30. Chapel starts at 10.30, so that means the doors close at 10.30. Um, and you scan out after we've been dismissed. What's really cool is, by the generosity of Reed Sheard, um, we are going to draw a winner from Wednesday's scan in and scan out. So if it's your name that we pick, you're going to get a special prize. So good luck. And now we have an informational video for you to enjoy. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Westmont Chapel. We have a pretty big announcement to make. We have a new chapel attendance system and it's automated. So that means you can check in and check out of chapel right from your phone. We have created two different apps, one for the iPhone and one for the Android. How it works is this. When you enter chapel and when you exit chapel, you will have a QR code that is generated in the app. You will get that scanned by one of our chapel greeters. If you have an iPhone, you will want to go to the Apple App Store and download the Westmont app that looks like that, the red one. Once you have that downloaded, you can open that on up and on the welcome screen on the bottom right hand corner on the toolbar, you'll see three dots with more. Please click on that. You will want to choose the student option, which is the very last option on the screen next to the backpack icon. That'll bring you to the student screen where you will want to choose the very first option that says Chapel Check-In. You will then be prompted to secure your Westmont credentials. Please press continue and enter in your Westmont email login. Once you have successfully logged in, a QR code will pop up on your screen and you are ready to check in and check out of Chapel. Use this for every chapel. Now for the Androids. If you have an Android, please go to the Google Store and download the Westmont Concierge app or directly download from the link that we have sent from the Campus Pastor's Office. 
If you have any pop-ups, please press install. You will then be prompted to fill in your Westmont credentials. Once you've successfully logged in, your very own QR code will pop up and you are ready to check in and check out of Chapel. If you do not have an iPhone or an Android, you will need to check in and check out of Chapel with Samantha Joyner. Please make sure to have your student ID with you. Just a reminder, to ensure you have credit for each chapel, please scan in before 1030 and check out after we are dismissed. That will equal one chapel credit. In order to receive chapel credit, you have to stay in chapel the entire time. Anytime you leave the building, you will be scanned out. If you decide to leave chapel early, you will not get credit. If you enter chapel late, you will be scanned in and you will also not get credit. Please turn your brightness on your phone all the way up for every scan in and for every scan out. Thank you. Isn't technology fun? We thought of doing blood screening as you came in and came out, but we were told this would be a better system. So here we go. Hey, I, uh, I really do want to welcome everybody to this. We are all Westmont, and, and we just added about 460 new students to our, uh, to our family here. So I want to welcome all the new students to chapel, to the community. Some of you are first years, and some of you are transfers, so we're from wherever you've come. We're so glad that you've landed here. Some of you are back in our midst after being away on a semester away or some other experience and, and I just want to welcome you back and I hope that you bring all that you just experienced back with you and uh, we look forward, I look forward to hearing about some of your adventures that you've been on. Uh, Jamie and I have been on some adventures this summer. Uh, I would like to say that they pressed my body, expanded my mind and exploded my heart. So let me first focus on the body. Uh, I was in Jerusalem walking from church to lunch with our crew from this May term trip and Deborah Dunn, the wonderful professor, a godly woman, says to me as she looks over this bronze horse statue, hey, I'll give you a dollar if you jump on that. <laughs> People, I'm a mature man of God. I'm not going to take that dare. So I just keep walking. And about 10 seconds later, she says, so you're chicken, huh? So I run, I vault up on that thing like a 20-year-old, and I hit this pose on there. Is the picture on there? There we go. I am on there. I'm like, victory! I have no idea if I'm offending several religions at this point. I don't know if this horse is worshipped. And I, Anyways, I'm on this thing, and all of a sudden I realize this metal horse in Jerusalem in May is really hot. The cookies are toasting, if you know what I mean. And so, after the picture, I decide I need to dismount, and I need to dismount right now. And so I decide, rather than get off a horse normal and fry my hands on the metal, I'm going to just do a little kick over the neck and slide down hands-free and stick the landing. I overestimated my, my flexibility. I overestimated. Got a little chubby over the summer, I don't know. I got my leg part way up, hit the neck of the horse, and then just free fell from, I don't know, is that 20 feet? I don't know how high that is. But some of the students here will tell you the sound is what they'll remember. <laughs> Travel can press your body. Uh, my mind was expanded uh, in a lot of different ways. I did some great reading this summer. And, uh, and also uh, became aware of some of the deep conflicts in these places in the world. Uh, there's, I've got a picture here of this uh, refugee camp in Bethlehem. And that, there on that wall is just the name of a bunch of children that have been taken uh, in through war. And it's just heavy. And so that leads to my heart being exploded. Uh, both in both directions. And, and when you see great sadness and great broken systems and, and meet personally people that are, uh, are hurting, it just really does something to your heart. But then on the flip side of it, uh, it does something to your heart that when you, even in those places, when you meet people who are inspiring, living beautiful lives, living faithful lives. And, uh, and I got to be with some people uh, like that. So 
Uh, I shed a lot of tears this summer. I don't know if that's part of being older or having your body pressed, your mind expanded, and your heart exploded. Um, but I'm very grateful. I feel like my heart got tenderized this summer. So if you were going to listen in and eavesdrop to Jamie and I in our prayers this summer, uh, you might have heard us praying for our sons and uh, their wives or their future wives. Uh, you might have hear us, heard us praying for peace in the Middle East and in Northern Ireland and Uganda, places we got to go see in South Sudan uh, because of a man that we met and some of our Westmont community uh, who were suffering. You would have heard us praying for them. Uh, I don't know if I've had a time in my life where I've prayed that line from the Lord's Prayer with more feeling. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth, here, now, uh, just like it is in heaven. Because we pray for people that we love, right? And we pray for places that we've encountered and we, and we care about, we're concerned about. And so this year when I get to speak in chapel... Uh, I have had it impressed on my heart to work through a series on John 17. And if you're not familiar with this passage, this is after several chapters of Jesus uh, speaking and teaching to his disciples. And it's, it's right before he goes to the cross. In John 17, we get to eavesdrop in and listen to Jesus pray to the Father. It's a, it's a great picture of intimacy. But in this prayer, sort of like if you were to listen to Jamie and I pray, you'd have an idea about what we care about, about who we care about, about the things that we hope for. In this prayer, as we listen to Jesus, there's so much to learn. I mean, the timing is important. This is very near the end. You know, when people are near the end of their life and they say stuff, people remember that and they pay attention. And uh, this is one of those moments. Jesus says at one point, the time has come. And so these words are fraught with meaning. But also the content is just deep water. It's, it's really something else to listen to Jesus pray to the Father. And we're witnessing this Trinitarian fellowship conversation. It's something else. But here's, I think, why this got impressed on my heart. Because I was thinking about you all. And I was praying about you all. And as I look at this passage, some of the things I love about it is that it, help, it will help us be really clear about Jesus Christ. Because he's going to talk about his own identity right in the midst of this prayer. And so I, I think it, it has been so helpful in my life to keep moving in clarity about who Jesus is. I think it's also important and why it's on my heart is because it will teach us about who we are. Uh, the, the verse for the year, really, in my mind, is the third verse of the chapter. I think I have a slide on it. I had Alyssa Becky do some artwork for us. And so listen to this passage. This is Jesus praying, and he says this, This is eternal life. And by the way, he's not just talking about heaven. That's not, just, that's not what Jesus means by eternal life. This is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. This is life. You know, I've, I've been working with young people a long time. I have yet to walk up and meet a young person who is hoping to live a shallow, meaningless life without impact. I haven't met anybody that says, that's my goal. I mean, I'm 20, and so here's my path. I want to aim at shallow. I want to aim at meaningless. I, I, I want an okay life. I meet people, and this is why I love being with you, who have their life in front of them and ha actually have big hopes and aspirations and dreams. And I'm telling you, that I, I hope you fall in love with this passage because it's been my experience that in knowing God, in having a relationship with Him, and in growing in clarity about who Jesus is, we come alive. We come alive, like the Bible uses this word zoe in the Greek. It's not just bios. It's not just that I have a pulse. It's, it's this life that is having your heart exploded, your mind expanded, sometimes your body pressed. So we can't miss this. Jesus is praying for us in this prayer. I've had some great people pray for me in my life. I've had my little four foot six Mexican Nana pray for me. When she passed away, my biggest lament was, well, who's going to be praying for me now? Because Nana got it done. Like, I think she prayed me into the kingdom of God. 
And then I had great heroes in my life, like Ron and Will, these guys who I met when they're in their 60s, and they just prayed for me. I got a great phone call last week, Ben Patterson calling and saying, I'm praying for you this year. It means something when people are praying for you. I want you to absorb this, that Jesus Christ prays for you, and he is still praying for you. The scriptures tell us that he always lives to make intercession for them. First John says, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He's praying for us. He's interceding for us. So there's some big themes we're going to look at, and I'll line these out as we go. Big themes. God in the flesh talking about glory, what that is, about truth, about our identity, about our communal trajectory and design as a people, about what's possible for us as a people. Jesus is going to talk about joy. He's going to talk about intimacy with him that even leads to his love coming into us and he himself coming into us. Big, big themes. And we're going to do it together. One of the trips Jamie and I got to go on this summer was a great, I'll tell you more about it. It's it's a great privilege. But we got to go back to Uganda. And it had been a long time since I'd been there, since I graduated Westmont. And uh, I'm on this American board, there's a Canadian board, there's a UK board, and there's a Ugandan board for this mission called New Hope Uganda. It's been in existence now 31 years. And for the first time in the history of the mission, we had this joint board meeting together. And it was beautiful. We were from different economic situations, different races, different tribes, different genders, different nationalities, different backgrounds, different families. And we worshiped and we prayed together and we worked on kingdom stuff together. And it was beautiful. And I felt alive. I felt like Jesus was leading us into life. This idea of oneness. That, you know, 460 of you have walked into a new community. And yet somehow, in the kingdom of God, we can all become one. The Hebrew word that the scriptures use for this is echad. It's like the oneness of uh, many team members moving in concert together. Or a choir. Or an orchestra. Multiple parts participating together in oneness. We, Jesus is praying that we experience that. That we actually live into that. So with that in mind, we're going to participate in communion right now. We do this at the first chapel of every year. I recognize that people come from different traditions, some church backgrounds where you may not be comfortable taking communion here, and we bless you in that. In fact, if you are not comfortable taking communion, come up in line and just put your hands over your chest like this, and the the communion servers will simply give you a blessing. But I want you to all know that this table is open for anybody who follows Jesus Christ. Let me pray for us. I'm going to ask for our communion servers to come up and take the elements to their respective places. Just so you know, we have people in both corners, down the aisles, down the middle. And if you would, after I pray, come up and take communion. We're going to be worshiping throughout that time. And I'll give us a benediction when we're done. Let me pray for us. Father, I feel like we're at the beginning of a road trip, and we're going to go through this year together. And I do pray that that's true, that you would lead us together to experience the kingdom of God. And we thank you for communion, this physical act that we're going to participate in that holds a lot of mystery for us. But we just want to do it out of obedience now to come and take the bread and dip it in the juice. And remember that your body and blood were given for us. That we might know you. And that we might be in fellowship together in ways that surprise us, that that blow our minds, that lead us actually into real, real life. And so we humbly say thank you. Thank you for giving yourself for us. Thank you for this new year. Lead us to walk in this together. In Jesus' name, amen. Come when you're ready.